I wanted to do a quick video on covering uh, rough running outboards. I'm sure all of us have run into this uh, at least once in our lifetimes if we're if we have anything to do with uh, with boating. <coughs> um, I want to do this in a two-part series because um, there's two key areas. There's gas and there's electric. So let me start with the fuel systems and uh, what could possibly cause an engine to run rough. There is the gas tank. This is probably one of the uh, key causes. So the first thing you want to look at in a fuel system is the vent. Um, should be open. But what I found is a lot of times these vents fail. Um, there's been a lot of cases of that. And the way the vent works, it's got a little uh, little one-way valve here, which you can see this. See the one-way valve? It's a little uh, silicone flapper valve, and it should layer, let air in, but not let anything escape back out. You see that little... Uh, valve right there um, they do fail and a lot of times a lot of times they don't work for reasons uh, unbeknownst to me um, one way to test if it's your valve is to just uh, slightly loosen your gas cap now another failure point and this actually bit me in the butt once is this area right here it's a quick disconnect for whatever reason this jammed up on me once And I wouldn't let gas flow through it. I had to take it off, poke it with a screwdriver. And, um, of course, I was in the middle of selling a 9.5 Sportwind. And it didn't, didn't look good. The guy ended up buying the engine anyway. But um, it was this valve that failed. And um, I had already checked. I had already checked the, uh, the vent. That was operating properly. Now, if either of these fail, one of the things that you'll notice is that the bulb will uh, collapse as you're running the engine, especially at higher speeds, and it'll stay collapsed. That means there's no fuel coming in from this. Now, another thing that you might want to look at is your bulb itself. The bulbs have a check valve built into them. They should get firm. If um, you pump it and it stays mushy, more likely than not, there's fuel feeding back into the gas tank. Um, that could cause your engine to run rough, Probably not, but it's just something you want to look at and make sure that is uh, working correctly. So those are key, uh, three key things that are making the engine run rough as far as the gas tank. One is the vent, of course, and um, the uh, quick connect valve, if it has one, this is Atwood. Uh, the bulb, either uh, the check valve not working because it's flowing backwards, or the check valve constantly being locked in place, maybe and not letting fuel uh, flow forward. All three of those, well at least the first two will cause this to collapse when you're running the engine. Now let's go on to the engine itself. Here's a quick tip, if you go out in the lake and you find out that your bulb is mushy, uh, there is a way uh, that you can get around that, at least enjoy the day of uh, boating. And I'll show you that real quick. Uh, if you find it's mushy, you're hitting it, it's not getting firm. Fuel's flowing back into the tank. Uh, what you want to do is, well, make sure you got fuel in the bulbs. And then before you squeeze it, I hate to do this, but pinch the hose and um, squeeze the bulb. Let go of the hose, let go of the bulb, so you get some fuel back in the system. Squeeze the bulb, and you should be able to get it so where you can prime your engine at least. That'll get you on the water and give you a day of cruising. Um, I don't recommend you do it all the time. You can't collapse uh, the interior part of the hose if you do that, um, but at least it'll get you running. Make sure you change the bulb out as soon as possible though, and um, maybe replace the fuel line and check it. Uh, make sure that it's not causing any problems. Hope this tip helps. We're still staying on the fuel system. Yes, yeah, old Johnson, uh, it's a little bit dirty, but it still runs great, actually. Um, I put a uh, automotive race engine, um, race fuel filter on this one, and um, 
what this allows you to do is actually open it up. Uh, it's got a, a sintered brass filter inside of it, and you can clean it out in a solvent and put it back in there. Um, so that's one area you want to check. Make sure you, your fuel filter, um, obviously this is not a stock one, but make sure your fuel filter is not clogged. Uh, the next area you want to check is going to be your, uh, your, your fuel pump. Um, the way this should work is when, you turn, when the engine is turning over, there is an impulse that comes out, in this case from the top cylinder, and the impulse will drive the diaphragm and the pump. Uh, there's really no easy way to check this, but one way you could do it, disconnect the hose on the discharge end, uh, get a small container, and uh, put the hose in it so you don't waste or put any gas into the environment. Cycle the engine. Uh, if you have to, disconnect the plugs and um, ground the uh, outlet so you don't uh, do any damage to the coils. But uh, cycle the engine and uh, you should have fuel flowing through there. Before you do that, of course, prime the system with the bulb. Um, and if you have fuel flow in there uh, and everything's working okay to that point, then next step is your carbs. To check the fuel pump, the best way is to use a, a fuel pressure gauge. Um, but to do that accurately, you really want to cut into this with a T or disconnect it here and put a piece of hose with a T on it. Connect the pressure gauge to it. For this particular engine, Johnson calls for different PSIs coming out of the fuel pump at different ranges. So for example, at 600, they would uh, expect to see one PSI. At 4,500 RPM, it would be 2.5 PSI. And in between um, that 2,500 to 3,000 RPM, it would be 1.5 PSI. But, you know, uh, different engines vary, different manufacturers vary, so you're uh, probably going to have to look it up for whatever engine you're, you're working on right now. Um, this is a manifold that I made, the plas original plastic one replaced. I replaced all the fuel lines, and it's something you may want to consider as well. If your fuel lines are old, they may look like this. They're typically a lining with rubber over it, and the lining can collapse. So if you're not getting good fuel flow and your engine's running rough because of that, you may want to consider changing uh, the old lines. But having covered the fuel tank, uh, the fuel line from the tank, pump, filter, the last thing you want to cover is your carbs. Uh, this is especially important nowadays um, with um, fuel that has ethanol in it. I prefer to run on ethanol, that's my preference. There are advantages to having ethanol fuel though. If there's any water in your fuel system, uh, ethanol will actually dissolve it up to a certain amount and run it through your system and burn it off. Now the problem is, uh, if it goes beyond a certain amount, then that ethanol will turn into gel basically and crap up your carburetors. But um, I rebuilt both these carburetors, uh, they're running fine. The uh, <coughs> one thing that you want to make sure you do with the carburetors is if you're not going to use them for a while, drain them. Um, you'd have to take the air box off, but there's a plug in the front uh, in the front of it, and there's actually the fast idle jet is underneath that plug for these carbs. You can take that screw out, that plug out, and uh, drain them, or you could run it dry. I prefer to drain it manually, only because I don't like running the engine unnecessarily when it's out of the water. Um, the last thing I'm going to cover is synchron the synchronization of uh, the carburetors, the butterfly valves. Let me cover that in just a second. So you want to make sure that the carburetors, uh, the butterfly valves are in sync, meaning that when the bottom one moves, the top one moves. There is an adjustment for that. There is a special tool uh, to help you synchronize uh, the carb uh, butterfly valves. It's called a throttle body amplifier or throttle shaft amplifier, one of the two. Um, you don't have to go out and spend one. It's actually pretty easy to make one yourself if you take a paintbrush and an alligator clip. Crap, I can't see. Um, you basically just clip it on to the top. What this does, it exaggerates any movement of the carburetor. Let me see if I can zoom in here. So as, you won't see me move the bottom one, but as I move the bottom one, you'll see the top one start to move. And you want them to be uh, as close as possible in terms of what you can get it. So uh, this is per Johnson Evinrude. Um, their instructions on how to how to manage and maintain these. 
um, you can see that these things are perfectly in sync. And what can happen is if they're out of sync and you've got one cylinder getting uh, more air, it's going to try to accelerate faster than the other one. So it's going to run rough. I can talk about this. This is the primer. Um, right now this is in the uh, normal condition, meaning that when you push the key in, uh, the solenoid is going to open. It's going to allow additional fuel. Uh, if this is broken or gets stuck in the open position, uh, you're going to flood the engine. So it's not going to run rough. It's probably not going to run at all. A few final tips. Um, it may behoove you to remove the fuel lines uh, coming from your tank to your engine and even inside the engine and inspect them. Blow them out. Johnson actually recommends that you do this if you're troubleshooting and to blow them out. But it's also a good time uh, to not only blow them out but to inspect them, make sure that the inner linings haven't collapsed and uh, are impeding the fuel flow. You know, again, look for a uh, collapsed fuel bulb, um, carburetor, butterfly valves that are out of sync, and um, you know, as a last resort, definitely you may want to consider rebuilding the carbs. I have a video on how to do that. They're not that difficult if you uh, have a carbureted engine. It's worth considering. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, hit like, share, and uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.